Growing up, I had just enough sarcasm and just enough foolishness to allow my mouth to get me in trouble. Best case scenario, I was at times annoying. Worst case scenario, my words were actually hurtful. Now, as we go through the book of James, we get to chapter three, and we're reminded that we have the power to give life or death with our words. And the book of James has reminded us that there's actually some practical implications to our faith. Our faith in God requires something of us. It requires action and action requires discipline. And this is true for the words that we speak. Maybe you know someone who's constantly apologizing for something that they said. They have no filter. They talk first and they think second. Now, James has something to say about this. He says this in regards to the most powerful body part we have, which is our tongue in chapter three. He says, people can tame all kinds of animals, birds and reptiles and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and then sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. At the end of the chapter, he goes on to say, those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Now, to be 100% transparent, I forget how powerful my words are. And I sometimes forget that I can bring peace or I can bring destruction. See, it's interesting when we go back to the creation story, God used words to bring light and creation. He spoke the world into existence and he spoke us into existence. That's how powerful they are. So we can't minimize the power of our words. And as we remember that, let's work to intentionally speak peace and truth to those around us.